thank you everyone for coming uh, on a beautiful sunny day, um, but it is more beautiful here working on a skill that is just so, so important uh, to doing business, to having influence in business, in life, this idea of pitching, talking, communicating, getting a message across. Uh, before sort of jumping into what we had planned, I am genuinely interested to know uh, why you have all decided. There were, I think, 60 people signed up um, and almost half here already to come in at lunchtime on a, a Tuesday uh, to learn about pitching. Um, and specifically, just going straight to you, I'm just going to throw it out there straight away. Uh, why do we pitch? Like, why, why do we do it? And that's a question that I want to ask you straight away before getting into anything. So don't be shy. I know there's a couple of people here who are ready to go. Why do we pitch? Tessa. Why else, why else do we pitch? To get you better. Relationship building. Relationship building. Why else? To, sh to share information, general communication. Why else, when else do we pitch? Yep. Start interacting. To start interacting, to start collaborations, to, you know, see if there's a synergy between two people. Why else? To communicate your idea. To communicate your idea. In, in what contexts? So, yep, as part of day-to-day -day communication. Keep it coming. What else? Yep. To validate, to get feedback. So, you, particularly in a startup, you've got an idea, you've got a concept, you're in the early stage. You want to get feedback on a project or an area you're working on. Great one. Anything else? To inspire. To, to inspire when, when you're running a business... Where do you actually pitch the most? Where do you inspire the most? In what part of your business do you think? Um, clients. Clients. So, so that's a good one. Yeah, so that came up. Sales. So, yep, that's there in front of customers to inspire. But there's probably one really big one missing. This is something that I use pitching for the most. I have a team. We have a team of 15 people. Staff. Hiring. Running a startup is really, really hard to hire on a budget. You don't have the corporate dollar to just pay, pay, pay. You've got to inspire, inspire with vision and get people on board. Uh, another one, you have no money in a startup, right? No one has any money early on. It's, it's tight, purposely tight, which is a good thing. So uh, something that I think I find pitching really useful for, for a startup, is getting stuff for free. Can you inspire someone to believe in what you're doing to give you something for free? So, you know, you're often doing contra deals at that early stage. Hey, this is what I'm doing, get on board, you give me this, I give you that. So um, that's some great stuff there. Uh, is there anything else anyone wants, wants to add? Anything else missing? Perfect. So for context there, I thought it was worthwhile just sharing those reasons um, why we pitch. Because everyone, uh, I'm just, question, who, who here came today to learn about pitching for the sake of investment? And secretly, I bet you there's a, a few more. Because that's what most of us think about. Most of us think about, hey, I'm starting a startup. I have to pitch, so I get investment. In truth, that is only a small, tiny amount in your business life cycle of you pitching. In fact, the most useful is on the other stuff. Selling, inspiring team, building team, hiring is where you pitch yourself the most. So, you, a show of hands, uh, before we get into us, this is about you. Um, who here is running a startup right now? Who's a founder? Half the room, who here is working for a startup? 
a couple. Who here is thinking about starting up their own startup? So almost there, fantastic. So it's a, a really nice spread. Who here uh, has, uh, is in year zero to one of their startup of those running? And one year plus? Awesome. So most of us are a uh, pretty early stage. Um, has anyone ever pitched in front of a big group of people for their business, like at a pitch event? Great. And my very last question, so I get a feeling, who here is thinking about pitching to get into an accelerator program or investment? Great. So thanks for coming down. Um, I guess context of today's workshop is it's a pitching workshop, um, but it's more about uh, communication, other, not just pitching for the sake of investment. So I congratulate you for coming down because I can only give you one guarantee this, uh, for this next hour is that this is not going to be one of those sessions where you sit and someone presents and you take notes because all, there's all these dot points and you go, that was great, but then it's in one ear and out the next and you didn't really learn anything. If you jump into the next hour, I guarantee that you will grow and shift the needle for yourself just a little bit. And that's what startups is all about. Every day, learning a little bit so you can shift it a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then you end up over there. So. I could see some. You on? Am I on? Yes. Yeah, I could see some terrified looks on people's faces when they realise they might actually be participating in this workshop, but you won't regret it if you do. So we've got startups in Australia, and we've got a startup ecosystem, but we certainly aren't Silicon Valley. We aren't even Tel Aviv. According to the Startup Genome Report, Sydney actually ranks 23rd out of the list of top, top cities from which to run a startup. Melbourne doesn't even register on that report. So, what that obviously means is that there's less capital in Australia and there are less providers that specifically gear their support and services to startups compared to our more developed counterparts. So at Luna, we aim to solve this problem by providing support specifically geared towards early stage startups. And that means legal and accounting, but it also means capital, it means connections, it means programs and partnerships. At Luna, we've worked with over 500 startups in the past four years, providing not just legal and accounting, but also programs and partnerships. So hundreds more through the programs and partnerships. And this is um, an example of one of those programs that we're running today. My name's Tessa Hawthorne. I'm a partner at Luna. I'm responsible for the legal arm of our business and everything to do with people and culture. So the hiring, the pitching that Renan was talking about, I do it almost every single day. Um, so my communication skills have definitely been honed and increased um, through that process. Um, Renan Heine is our founder and CEO, and I'll hand back over to him. Cool. Uh, good job, Tess. Just hold on a second there before I tell you about me. So uh, Tess actually just... You just did a little pitch. Um, now that we're starting to think about some of these concepts on why we pitch, um, you know, to develop a pitch, it's all about feedback, to tell you the truth. It's not about sitting in your room and writing down word for word what, what you can do. The best pitches, the best stories, are usually those stories or those people who have received the most feedback on those stories. I often say entrepreneurship is a game of feedback. The people who get the most win. So hit me with it, guys. So, Tell me in that context, what did, we, what did we <laughs> like about Tessa's pitch? So we always start off with, what did we like? What, what landed with you? Energy. Great energy. So Tess, I'm going to get you Thanks. to write down some of this stuff. All right, that'll make me feel good until we get to the bad stuff. So maybe just put a line through there, because we're going to start to workshop and on this board as we go through this next little period in time, some stuff that makes a good pitch. So energy and passion is something I'm hearing. What else did we like? Belief. Confidence. Did you notice that she started back here and then slowly walked forward as she got into the pitch? It probably gave that feeling of confidence and she was standing tall. She wasn't looking, looking down. So confidence in how you hold yourself. What else? Clear message. 
So well rehearsed. It was clear that wasn't the first time she's ever said the message, right? That actually was the first time. Well, now you're <laughs> disproving the theory, but I saw you before writing heaps of notes, so I'm guessing that there was I practiced it in there. the mirror. Okay, that's, a, that's all right for now. Let's uh, feedback. What didn't land? What's uh, next time Tessa's going to get up here? She's going to be back here next week. I've got thick skin, guys. Go for it. Uh, what's it to be improved? Okay. So, so some pausing perhaps could have been helpful. Top three things. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a good point. That's a nice little tool. If you want to get a message across, this is what we do. Number one. Number two. Number three making it really clear. So I agree with you. It was a bit rushed and particularly on that, that message. What else is it to be improved? Come on, don't make me do it. What's in it for me? So what's in it for me is you, the audience, so the test could have done a better job of saying, hey, what's in it for you? You should contact us, we could help you do X, Y, and Z, maybe something like that to make, to have, what's the impact on, on you? What else? One more, come on. We've got we to match three, three likes with three um, to be improved. Yeah. This is true. I mean, Tessa is um, being part of the organising committee for TEDx Melbourne for a number of years, relevant to pitching. She hires, you know, we're talking, she hires lots of people, but she's pitching maybe 20 times a week, worked with 400 plus startups, some of them really successful thanks to some of her, her, her coaching and work. So I agree, establishing credibility is a really important thing. We call it the white coat. You know, it's like uh, in a lab, a, a white coat. Do you have credibility? Are you the professor? And a key to, to establishing credibility is not necessarily by saying, hey, I'm the best at X, Y, and Z, believe me. You do it in more subtle ways. This is what I've done. You do it through identifying the work that you've helped other people achieve. So that's really good. Um, so for some context, I'm Renan, uh, the founder of of Luna, um, I, for background, I guess I got into um, entrepreneurship uh, actually via VC and private equity. I was working as a corporate and commercial lawyer at one of the big law firms uh, 10 or so years ago, um, working on the VC private equity side and I realised all the, the fun and excitement was on the entrepreneurship side, the people growing businesses, not the people investing in businesses and I saw a huge problem in how those people, particularly in Australia, were accessing services. You know, when you're an entrepreneur um, and you are starting a business, as lots of you are here, it's never been easier in Australia or around the world to, to start a business. You've got Wi-Fi, you've got a phone, you've got someone who can code, you can code yourself, you build a site, you get going, you're touching customers, you're making sales, you know, almost immediately. But what about all the other stuff? You're now the head of legal, the head of HR, the head of marketing, the head of hiring, the head of sales, um, and you're a first-time entrepreneur and it's really, really hard. So I saw that in uh, real life with the entrepreneurs I was working with as a lawyer, uh, and that's where Luna was born from, as a service to help um, entrepreneurs access business skills, services and support they need to go, hey, I'm starting a business, I've got an idea, to um, running a, a really big and scalable startup. So we work with hundreds of entrepreneurs, um, hundreds of startups over the past four years, seen, uh, starting to see some great success stories. You know, the next Canvas, Atlassians, and we're on the growth path with a lot of them. Uh, seen way more people, um, we call it failures, but it's not failures in a negative sense because people come, they start, they test, they validate, they realise, oh, not right, drop off, start again, go again. Um, and it's, it's been great to be on this growth journey. 
who here has been knows of Startmate, the accelerator program? Okay, just one. So it's one of the key accelerator programs in Australia. They just had their demo day. So we, as an example, um, half, our, half the cohort were startups that we had worked and coached with before they got into the program. So um, we like to think that startups we work with put in the effort to learn business skills they need, have a better chance of, of success. So our plan of attack today is first we're going to work out why pitch. You guys did that for us. We didn't have to actually tell you anything there. The next bit, we're going to work on how to pitch. And then this idea of practice, practice, practice. Because as we identified with this exercise at the start, all the knowledge and feedback you need is actually in the room right here. It's not something that we can necessarily give you, but it's actually something best received from your peers. And like I said, entrepreneurship is often a game of feedback. The more feedback you get, the further you move along the line. Sound like a plan? So are we ready to roll up our sleeves, you know, get a little bit playful? Yeah? Yes. Yeah? Woo! Woo! <laughs> Down the back, I'm hearing it as well, a little bit. <laughs> We've got the right people in the front row. <laughs> okay, so just, just to, to touch on what we have on the whiteboard for those who can't see, um, some key reasons to pitch is, or to learn some structure around pitching, um, or to have some knowledge, teaches you to communicate clearly and effectively, and you use that in all sorts of contexts. You use that for investment, but you will also use that day to day. You will use it when you're in the elevator here, to you speak to someone who looks interesting, hey, what do you do? And you say, this is what I do. Can you do that in a more dynamic and better way that it actually leaves an impact on that person? It helps you to test and validate an idea. So particularly with early stage startups, validation and testing is really, really important. You would hear it um, all the time. And actually being able to do it properly requires an effective communication on your part. We often see founders who can't actually describe what they need or they can't communicate clearly. So if they're getting feedback and they're basing business decisions on feedback, it's really important that they're very clear to their customer or the person they're wanting feedback on what they're doing. It helps you get stuff for free and cheap. Don't underestimate how important this is as an early stage. If you can communicate, story tell, sell your vision, you will find opportunities and things coming to you that you otherwise might not have to pay for. And ultimately helps you make sales. I put investment under that bucket because investment is a really, really big sale of sorts. Um, but this is what going into business is all about. You have to make sales. So first, uh, we'll get, now we're going to start to get into a bit of structure. So when I say structure, you often hear probably people that you view as really good storytellers, pitchers. You've seen startups at a demo day or a pitch night um, pitch and you're like, whoa, they're such great speakers. They're, they're amazing communicators. And the truth is, it's all about structure. And, not, and having structure around different types of pitches. So when I say different types of pitches, it's not about saying, hey, great, I've got this five minutes well rehearsed. I can adapt that for everything. It's about going, no, there's different occasions when I need to be able to talk in different ways. As an example, you got your elevator pitch. You got 30 to 60 seconds with a person. You're, you're chatting to a person here, you go, what do you do? They, 30 seconds, they tell you what they do. That's an opportunity. You never know who you're, you're talking with. In a place like this, where there are investors, um, key influencers, other startups, uh, more developed uh, potential recruitments buzzing around everywhere, every single time you get asked, hey, what do you do? You're in the lift, you say, hey, what do you do? Is an opportunity to pitch. So that's a really, really important one. Then you've got the coffee pitch. 
you, you met someone, you gave them the, the elevator pitch, they said, great, let's catch up for a coffee. And, you know, how does that start? All right, so tell me about what you do. And you got two to five minutes where you basically run through, hey, I used to be this person, now I'm this person, then I fell into being that person, I saw this big problem in the world, here I am today, I've got this unique solution, and, and off you go, and then they do their thing right back at you, and that happens all the time. And then you've got the formal sit down. And then you've got the one where someone's really, really interested and you go, okay, cool, this is your sale. Come in and present to us and tell us why we should do business to you. Come in and present and tell us why we should invest in you. I want you to meet one of our partners so that you can run them through what you're, what you're doing. So I find this, uh, particularly for myself, a really good way to co compartmentalize the different occasions and the timings around the stories I need to be able to tell in these occasions. So today, what we're going to spend the most time on, in fact, all our time, is giving you some support around your 30 to 60 second pitch, your elevated pitch. Excited? I saw a bit of a but feels good. Great. Okay, first up, this is where we stop. I stop doing the talking, Tessa stops doing the talking, you know, she's just standing there, but we're going to get a little bit more involved. So we need um, three volunteers. Who's game to just come up, stand up wherever, wherever they're comfortable and just tell us, tell us about your business? Um, there's a lot of startups here, a lot of entrepreneurs sitting in the room. Who wants to, uh, to give it a go? Just pitch their business. We got our first here. Um, two more. Who else? Who else wants to come up the front? Amazing. Great. Guys, round of applause every time someone comes up. Woo! <laughs> All right, come up, come up the front. One more. We need one more. Remember. Woo! Good work. Come up. All right, so well done to you guys because you get the opportunity to get ahead of these guys because you're just about to get feedback from everyone here, what they loved and what's landing and, and potentially not landing. So let's, um, let's give it a go. One requirement of the audience, when someone puts themselves out of their comfort zone, gets up the front to pitch their business, we give them a big round of applause afterwards <laughs> and beforehand. Hi everyone, Michael Kelly's my name. Here's the two takeaway messages about what I do. These are the ones to take away. Pitch consulting, leadership communication coaching. Now let me flesh that out for you. Consider this, your career will largely be defined by how well you present in important meetings. So think about how well do you present in important meetings. If you could do it better, come and see me after or during this event. So to recap, two takeaway messages about what I do, pitch consulting, leadership communication coaching. Michael Kelly. Woo! Amazing. Hi, my name is Fung Yuen and I'm from W Australia and we're all about hiring um, uh, enabling hiring managers uh, of corporations to allow easy access and on-demand uh, to con IT contractors at a, a few clicks of a button. So, you know, if you've ever struggled in hiring people or the right people with the right skill sets uh, on any kind of project terms, whether it be one day or, you know, three months to six months to one year, W Australia will, uh, is the platform uh, to, to go to to access... Um, uh, highly skilled contractors. Woo! So my name is Java. I'm from Brazil, and uh, I'm starting a startup to create the instant promotion for the beauty salons and the and the massage places and the, this kind of things. And it comes because it, the idea comes because I have already four salons which is doing a specific treatment for the hair. And we saw that we have a lot of gap of time, but we don't have clients. And it's very difficult to get clients in the right time. And the same, this in the same mode, like for clients, it's very difficult also find a booking in, the, in that moment with a good price. So the whole idea is of that. Thing. 
Fantastic. <laughs> Woo! Okay, great. <laughs> Guys, stay up here. Um, a moment of reflection for the crowd. You've just heard three pitches. Um, again, uh, pull out your notepad or your phone or just make a mental note really quickly for yourself. Um, it's really important if you want to develop your own pitches that you look at other people and go, oh, I really like what, I really like that. That's a to be improved, kind of acknowledging what you're looking at. So, task for you just for a second is just to reflect one thing you liked out of all the pitches, one, one thing you liked and something that you think is a, a to be improved. So, just... Yes, it is a gift. So, uh, take a minute, just have a think for a second. I really encourage you to write it down because you might need it at another point in time. So remember, one thing you liked, one thing you saw that impressed you, and one to be improved. <laughs> I think maybe we should open it up for comments to the people pitching. Okay, so throw it out there. Uh, what is, what's something you liked? I like your accent. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bringing himself, he just spoke naturally, didn't really care. He's Got an accent, great, this is who he is. Yeah. What else? Like, this is the easy one, come on, what can did I, you like? Can I give one? Yeah. The power question. I think both of you posed a question. I think yours was, if you need help with something or if you can do, if you, if you could do this better, come and speak to me. How many people would say to themselves, I c couldn't possibly do it better? It's a power question that kind of rings in someone's I ears. know, it intimidated me sitting here going, well, we're running a pitching workshop and we've got an expert right here. Um, and you did a, a great job of, of building credibility with a question. Thank you. Yep. Guys. What? Yep. Yeah. Great, so he did, he made it clear that there are these two opportunities for different groups of people, yeah. Like yeah, excellent. The problem and the solution were set out clearly yeah. in the pitch. Yeah, what else? Okay, we'll go one more like. Everyone's got them, so I know, know they're there. One more like. Yeah. Uh, excellent. Uh, something I really liked, I like that you threw in four years of experience in a hair salon. So you threw it in with authenticity, not as a brag. This is what I've done. Oh, great. You've definitely got experience in this area. You wore the, the you wear the white coat. Um, so well done. Uh, next, to be improved. What would you like? For, for this is this is the gift. This is feedback. The gift. So what's a to be improved? Yeah. Uh, talking to, to actually addressing the people you're, you're seeking to address. So if you're talking to a crowd, often maybe looking at the back rather than just the people right here, um, scanning the room. Yeah, good pick up. What I could have improved, I don't think I looked at this gentleman. <laughs> yeah. Over and I was too much scared. Yeah, um, yeah, so that, that's a self, a self improvement. Uh, what else? Come on, guys. There's definitely stuff there you would have liked to have heard. It's an int yeah, interesting 
interesting concept, less is more. Knowing what you actually want to achieve from a pitch. A pitch doesn't always have to be, here's all the information, this is everything I do. Maybe the best thing from a pitch is inspiring someone to come have a conversation with you afterwards. It's not about, I heard this great analogy, um, it's not, you know, it's not about telling, if you think about a murder mystery, you're reading a book, you know, it's not about, you don't find the dead body on page one, you know, it's, it's about, ooh, where's the dead body? It's about finding the dead body, it's the mystery around. So don't tell people everything, leave a bit of mystery. Um, and so I think, particularly when it, you've got a short period of time, leaving suspense and some mystery is a good thing rather than here's everything you need to know about me and my, my business. Anything else? Yep. 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 So it could goes both ways. So no, yeah, I, I understand, but that's an interesting point because now we've got uh, one person who said, oh, I like that he said he's from Brazil, it gave me context to who he is, and someone else who says, hey, it doesn't matter, you've got an accent, it's great, it's, it's awesome, you don't have to maybe be, explain yourself, you, you don't need to justify yourself. And right there is the thing with pitching and communication. I don't think there's any one exact way to do it. It's not this is right and this is wrong. I think the tip from me is being yourself and bringing who you are authentically is always going to be right. It might land perfectly with others, with some, and, and not so perfect with others. But what I did like there was the authenticity around, hey, this is, this is me, this is who I am, and I'm giving a pitch and it doesn't matter if my speech is perfect, not perfect. It's not about the words, it's often about the pitch. Uh, structure and um, and passion. So, guys, thank you very much for coming up. Uh, I just have a question. Uh, I just want to know if my 30 second speech is was it clear, like to understand what is the business about, and or or not? Like, how many people understood what it so is? We'll just do a show of hands. Honestly, who understood? Great, and who who didn't understand? Great, so it's 50-50, so this is fantastic, work to be done, and we're going to get going doing it. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to go to, oh. oh, we just skipped over the whole thing, this is not going, what we're going to do now is we're going to watch um, a 60 second pitch from one of our one of our um, startups that we work with. And so just getting used to this idea about what works, what we like, and what we don't like. For some context, this is a founder of ours about a year and a half ago who was pitching to get into, um, he was in an accelerator program and he's pitching for $1.2 million. So I want you to reflect and go, I like this, I don't like that, oh sorry, not I don't like, I like this, and this is something that um, he should improve on. You'll get the gist, I'll give you the takeaways. So he's raising, um, so he is pitching for $1.2 million, and he gives this pitch, and this, you might say, is not the most enthusiastic and the best and the most well put together pitch. Uh, but the good news is, after three months, he raised $1.2 million. So this was where he started. He didn't go, hey, I've got a, he had an opportunity, you know, in two days time. And he just said, cool, I'll do it. I don't need a professional video. I don't even need pitch coaching or training. I'll get feedback wherever I can get it. But that, I'm not gonna let my lack of, um, you know, experience in pitching or confidence in pitching getting in the way of an opportunity and hey, the worst thing that I can do is I put it forward and people give me feedback on no, it looked very, it looked like this, it looked like you didn't have effort, I couldn't understand what you were doing and that was the starting point for him. So, um, 
I guess the key tool there is there's often lots of stuff to be improved, but you've got to start somewhere. And for him, this was the first time. And then look, $1.2 million later, he's happy. And now, six months later, he's an excellent communicator. And that's no formal training. That's just practice, 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 practice. So, it keeps doing this. So, this is a, a little structure that I want to give you. So, this, when we're talking about a 60 second pitch, we've come up with a little structure on how we see it working really well with entrepreneurs and startups. So we're going to keep this up here. We'll also send you the slides so you don't need to feel like I have to get everything down. In a nutshell, it's a simple structure. You've got 60 seconds. This might be you are standing up in front of everyone like Tessa was doing before and she's basically got 60 seconds to put aside what she does, who she is, her credibility and what she needs. It might be you're at a networking event or breakfast or something and you go around the room and each person basically has 60 seconds and it's an opportunity to pitch. Uh, and this is a structure that works really, really well um, for 60 seconds. It starts, of course, with defining the problem. You'll notice that we've kind of got timings here, but it's 30 seconds in the problem. The problem, entrepreneurship, is about loving the problem, not your solution. I'm sure you've heard that to death. Um, it's falling in love with the problem, knowing that problem, know, showing that you're an expert in the problem. So you spend the first bit on the problem, then you throw in your solution, 15 seconds, give some evidence, you know, why you, why your team. I've been a hairdresser for four years, I've seen this problem first hand. And then don't forget to finish with an ask. If you're ever got 60 seconds, You've got a room of people. There's always an opportunity for something. So the ask might be, hey, you know you've got 60 seconds with an investor. The, the ask might be, hey, I'm looking for funding. Um, let me know if you're interested. Come chat. But asks can be anything. Hiring. I'm looking for... He's talking to a group of uni students. We're looking for interns. You know, the ask can be anything in any opportunity. So this is the first structure. Again, I'm going to come back to this. Where we're going is we're going to do a little workshop... Um, where each of you are going to work on their 60 second pitch or their 30 second pitch. So this is for the 60 second pitch, a structure. So we're going to go back. The next bit is the 30 second pitch. So 60 seconds, you basically have time to talk about the problem, the solution and... Uh, you know, a bit about you and what you need. But in 30 seconds, you're in the elevator, you're passing someone in the street, it's really quick. You don't have time for that, really. Probably the best thing you can do is leave an impact on a person, give them a taste of what you do, give them a taste of the problem, a taste on how you address it, and leave them hanging for more. Hey, oh, I'd love to chat, do you have a card? Can I add you on LinkedIn, what's your name? Fantastic, that's a great result from that 30 seconds. So we like to use the structure, um, the acronym is PSI. So starting with problem and your pain point, then solution and then impact. So it might go something like you, your problem, you know how, solution, what we do, impact, so they're not only but also. These you might be going, oh, what, what, uh, what does that mean? So I'll give you a, a quick example. So you know how getting out of bed in the morning really, really sucks. Agreed? It really sucks, yeah? So what we do at Wake is using a safe and simple uh, tablet. We make sure that you wake up in the morning with energy so that not only do you have more energy for your day, but also you have more time to be productive in the morning. Uh, I just have kind of rolled with that, but knowing that I have a structure enables you to get there. So um, that's how it works in context. 
I think it's it's a really it's a really good structure, and and, and for me, structure is everything. It, this, there's lots of structures you can get. There's, I'm sure our pitch our pitch uh, expert here can roll off another ten. These are the ones we we go to with our entrepreneurs as a starting point. So again, before we go off in um, individually and and work on this, Tessa is going to jump in, and we're going to give you an example of Luna. 60 second pitch first. Being a first time entrepreneur is really hard. One in 12 startups will fail and that's mainly because of a lack of support. Starting a business requires you to wear multiple hats, whether it's legal, accounting, marketing, growth, and you're not gonna own all of those hats on day one. In fact, the hat is gonna wear you, you're not gonna wear the hat. So at Luna, we're a tech enabled one stop shop for legal, accounting, education and investment for early stage startups and entrepreneurs. We deliver these services um, as startup specialists that care specifically about the growth of your venture. We've worked with 500 founders over four years at Luna. And we have an incredible team of young professionals that, have that are dedicated solely to startups. That is dedicated solely to what you do in your business. The ecosystem is growing, which means that we have more clients than we know what to do with, which means that we need more bums on seats. We need more startup experts in our company. So my ask to you is that if you know anyone that would love to work within and thrive within a fast-paced, dynamic environment, please send them over to me. Woo! Round of applause. We're not going to do the critique thing, so we don't have enough time. This is just so you can see it in practice, and I promise you, I told Tessa this morning that to put together a new version of, of this. So it's something you can come up with really quickly. I do have the cheating, the, the ability to cheat and yeah. look at the notes while I do it. So, okay, so 30 seconds. 30 second version. So you know how we have an underdeveloped startup ecosystem within Australia. This means less capital and less startup specific support for early stage founders. At Luna, we provide support and services geared specifically towards early stage ventures. That includes legal, accounting, programs, capital and investment, delivered by a team of dynamic startup experts. So that not only can your company thrive being given advice geared specifically towards what it does best, it can also be connected to Luna's community of startups. Cool, well done. All right, again, just let that land, it's just an example. What I want you to do now is, so we started a little late, so we're just gonna go till um, five past if that's okay. I invite you, I, I understand there might be some people who need to duck, duck away straight away, but we've got another 15 minutes to go and this is the bit where you are gonna put to work, you know, you're gonna work on your pitch. This next 15 minutes, you are gonna develop your communication skills, I promise you, if you jump in. So. Using either of those structures, so we've got the 30 second pitch or we've got a 60 second pitch. I will flick between them, but maybe just quickly write down each one. Why don't you write, if you want to go with the 60 second pitch to trial that out, just quickly write this down. I think, Ro, wouldn't you say that the 30 second pitch, we find you're gonna use that more frequently throughout the course of life and in your business? Good call, Tessa. So I think it's the more useful pitch, but up to you if you see that the 60 second might be more useful to you. Okay, and we're gonna move on and we're just gonna leave the 30 second pitch up here. So what I want you to do in a few minutes is, I want you for your business or your idea, your startup, uh, I want you to write down your 30 second pitch or 60 second if you really want to, but I encourage you on the 30 second. Have a go at writing your new 30 second pitch and then turn to the person next to you and you're going to give it and get feedback. Um, and then you're gonna swap in your partners, right? So I will tell you, I will give you a few minutes to write it down, so take some time by yourself and then straight away you're gonna give it a go and get some feedback from the person next to you. Okay.
Okay, we'll just have 60 seconds, uh, a minute more to just write down our 30 second pitch. Okay, so now, if you could just come back to the room, heads up. If you could just turn to the person next to you, and this is the, the, the time for you to grow. Each person is going to do their 30 second pitch to the other person. Uh, the person listening has a really important job. Listen, give one round of feedback, what you liked, always what you liked, and what's it to be improved person who gave the pitch quickly scribble some notes do it again one more time and then get the feedback and what you what you liked what you didn't like and then we're going to switch partners all right so person number one you basically have two minutes now go on 30 seconds pitch to the person next to you and get some feedback Okay, guys, you should be on the second pitch. You should have taken down feedback and be pitching a second time. So you know how.
Uh, great. All right, everyone, switch over. So it now should be person two pitching to person one. Quick, short and sharp. Switch, switch, new person. Okay, you should be on to your second round of pitching to that person. between Sydney and Melbourne. Yeah. All right, guys, so just uh, 60 more seconds and then we'll come back to the front. Okay, everyone, if we could come back to the room, wrap it up. Okay, come on back, come on back. So it, if we could have everyone back to the room, great. Well done to all of you. I was walking around and I was seeing in a really short space of time, people were able with some structure to have some really great pitches. First of all, I want to congratulate all of you uh, for staying around because it got to that interesting bit of the workshop where we require people to jump in and participate. And I'm sure you noticed, you thought about even, oh, this is a good opportunity for me to, to squeeze out. but. Everyone here decided to stay and what I guarantee you is you move the needle for yourself just a little bit compared to those people who, um, who decide to leave. So I just want to say from myself and Tessa, thank you for staying in here. And now we have just a few more minutes and so I'm going to ask who would like to come up the front and give their new pitch a go and so people listening, I know you would have heard a good pitch or two. So encourage that person to come on up. Who wants to give it a go? Yep, come on up. Great. Anyone else? Yep, come on up. Chance for one more person. I'm seeing these guys. Do you, one of you want to come up? No? Someone? Yep. Would you, do, you want to, do you want to come up again? Great. All right. That's it. Great. Fantastic. Okay. okay, go for it. The problem, um, hiring. Hiring is a problem. Everybody needs people. And uh, getting people on an on-demand basis is uh, a real challenge. 
hiring is expensive, and more often than not, you are dependent on the skills of a recruiter. The solution, W is a completely self-service digital platform which bridges the gap between hirers and candidates in the gig economy. We circumvent the need for having a recruiter and we bring in complete transparency in the whole process. Impact, save 80% of your hiring costs and have hiring truly on demand. Thank you. Woo. Hello everyone. So You're looking at rostering, you're looking at, you're looking at pulse systems and left, right and centre, everything in the world. So one thing that is a problem here is that none of it actually talks to one another. So you still have to pull reports here, pull reports there to understand your business. So what we do is bring all of this management into one platform so that you and your managers can understand your business in one place. So I guess my ask today here is if you have a business um, in the hospitality industry or if you know someone that does, send them my way and I'd love to have a chat. Woo! Hi, I'm Ben and my problem, oh, sorry, what, what, I, what I'd like to tell you is I'd like to help you with pain. Now, we all have pain. As people, we have pains. It could be inside of our head, it could be in our workplace, it could be at home, it could be anywhere. We only have one life. So, uh, the pain that I want to talk about is emotional or psychological pain. My own story is that I, I quit my job uh, a couple of weeks ago and um, it's a bit painful getting recruited. And uh, I see psychological safety, which is what I'm, my pro free product is for you. Um, is something that we can uh, work together on uh, through hospitality. It's hospitality in your own mind and the negative thoughts. It's uh, through practices, through habits, good habits. And uh, ultimately, um, my solution is to build psychological safety at a personal level, at a team level. At a team level, let's use uh, the tools that are proven in IT and technology, the scrum sort of methods, uh, and also in the Rugby World Cup, such as in the last Rugby World Cup, where you have some great, amazing, heartfelt performances, say from David Pocock, leading the Wallabies. Great performances and great results, and the impact is um, sanity and less pain. Great. Well done. So we're not going to do, because we're, we're short for time, we're not going to have an opportunity to do the group, what we loved, and feedback, but you had three pitches here. I encourage you afterwards, if you've got any thoughts for the people pitching, come up to them. Um, I will just say well done to all of you for kind of using a structure and in the space of, you know, a couple of minutes you with a structure and some sort of plan of where you were going, you actually managed to get there. So a round of applause for everyone pitching. And so this is the end of the workshop. Uh, that was just an hour and a, a taste um, into pitching. And even though it, we spoke for about 40 minutes and then the t or in pairs in the space of 10, 15 minutes, you were able to get rapid feedback and developing your pitches. You can see how easy it is with practice and a bit of structure to develop a, a really, really great pitch. So um, thanks for having us. Our details are up there. Um, and feel free to come and have a chat. Ro and I will be working from Fishburners for the rest of the day um, and we're, we're all ears yeah. and open doors. And so, so we do a run a more extended version of this workshop which goes over two to three hours where you actually get a bit more hands on and really come out the other side. So if you are pitching for something, um, really important coming up or you want to work on uh, how you're communicating your vision, how you're hiring, get in touch. Um, we'd be happy to chat. If there's anything else in your startup you need help help with, funding, um, uh, legal, accounting, finances or general strategy, get in touch. We'd be happy to have a chat. And thanks to Fishburners. Well, thanks to Fishburners. Yeah, it's always an amazing turnout here. So it's a really unique co-working space and for those who aren't working here we encourage you to work from here. Good place to be and if anyone would like to practice their pitch 
and hasn't been to Friday night pitches yet, then we'll definitely recommend. We have lots of different themes. So this Friday night is uh, indigenous startups pitching their businesses. We had uh, clean tech last week. We have all kinds of themes like SaaS platforms. And if you'd like to pitch, come and chat with me. Or if you'd like to attend, then uh, grab a ticket on Humanitics. But yeah, thanks so much, Luna, for coming again. And <laughs> see you guys next time.